And what is going back one guys? Feels good to be back home, not gonna lie. So this is probably, I say this all the time, but I get so many questions and I like try to respond to people as much as possible. So give me ideas on what videos to do. So honestly, I really appreciate that. So we have Apollo. You guys see the title, y'all see the thumbnail. How much did it cost me to build Apollo? My full bolt on Gen 3 85 car. And um, I'm gonna pick every single piece apart on this car starting from the, uh, the front to the back, to the headers, to the intake manifold, to the throttle body. And granted, when I tell you these prices, I did get a better deal than maybe some of y'all can get. And maybe some of y'all can get a way better deal than me. But this is just the prices I got and the cost it cost me to build the car exactly the way it sits. Um, I know things can vary and everyone's price range is different. So my best option to you is joining all the forms, get on every single form possible on Facebook, Instagram, whatever the parts forms and part out, like find part outs. Cause that's like one of the best ways to find good aftermarket parts for if it's for a Fox body, if it's for your S550, Camaros, C6s, whatever the case may be. Honestly, anything, look on the parts farms, look on the forms and that's probably the best deals you can honestly get. So let's start off with the exterior. As you guys see, uh, Apollo is on Rohanas. I believe they're the FR or RF1s, one of those models. But these wheels retail for about 500 almost, I think it's like four, 350 to 500 a wheel depending on the size. But these stickered for like, I think they were like 430, 425 ish. Just rim alone, that is just the rim alone. So at the time I found these, the deal for them, they were satin silver. Um, the wheels alone um, and Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 4 S's that were on there. Um, tires were good, a little bit of cracked up, not super bad. But tires, TPS sensors, all wheels, not a single mark, not a single nick. Um, I don't even think they really were even on the car, the guy said. $1,500. Absolute freaking steal. So write that down. $1,500 is what we're at. It's going to add up very quick and I'm kind of like a little nervous. I got a little notes list on my phone. So we're going to mark it as we go through. And uh, let's jump over to the front bumper. All right, we got the list going on the phone. I forgot to even mention the powder coating job on them, so I just added another 500 bucks. So we're at a solid 2K, just wheels and tires. Ain't that right, Guido? What's up, fat boy? So off to the next is a 777 style performance GT500 front end. For the Gen 3 model, this is for the 18 to 2022 models. And um, I'm not gonna lie, fitment is okay. I give it like a seven out of 10. Bumper quality, a absolute 10 out of 10, because you guys remember, I hit a fat hubcap going about 90 miles an hour and completely exploded over the car. And the front lip actually held on pretty strong. So 10 out of 10 for that right there. And for the bumper was a thousand bucks. Um, paint and then PPF, which you don't have to PPF, but if you want to save your car from rock chips and keep it as long as possible, just like me and keep it looking A1, um, I, I recommend PPF. So thousand bucks for the bumper. I think I paid, um, oh, I got a super good deal. I think I paid a hundred dollars for the bumper painted and another 200 for the install. So let's just say bumper, PPF, install, 1500 flat. Um, and that's for the whole front end, the canards, everything you see right up front. As I give you guys these numbers, I try to keep them as round as possible so it's more easier for you guys to understand and um, I'm not gonna nickel and dime every little thing. Some of the things I'm rounding up in my head, so if it's maybe like 80 bucks more, I round it up. But some of the other things, I round it down so it kind of evens it out. I, I have it all in my brain, but you guys will understand. Almost forgot my S550 Euros. The Euros, I got them a little bit discounted. I believe I paid about $400 for the Euros and then the lights on the side were about $80. And then I added, you could just say LED lights all the way through on the whole package. I believe it was like $89 on Amazon. So the Euros, side light and interior lights, I wanna say let's just go 600 bucks for the whole lighting package side side and interior glove box leds up top and you can see i added them everywhere up at the top led because you know i don't know why ford does this but they use that nasty yellow looking bulbs but let's pop the hood on apollo and show you guys underneath all right lights added 600 dollars. and as i keep walking around the car i keep also forgetting my gt500 spoiler i got that from cj pony parts and it does have the wicker bill the wicker bill is right over there on the shelf so that spoiler, I believe, was 600 So add another $600, and I might cry after this list is all said and done because this is kind of getting a lot more than I expected. Spoiler, 600 Thank you, sir. All right. Pop the hood on an old girl, and yeah, we're not even going to talk about that carbon fiber seat right now. 
But let's pop the hood on this old girl and check this out. So before we even get under the hood of Apollo, you guys know I'm a huge, huge fan of all motor cars. Um, I love boosted cars also, but for the line of work I want to be in, I need cars to be as reliable, long lasting, I can absolutely beat the piss out of them and not have a problem or just do minor changes or fixes here and there. Nothing crazy. So you guys know Apollo's pretty much at the breaking point of full bolt on E85. I mean, not really breaking point, but like I'm as deep as I can go before tearing the heads off, doing cams, and um, I really don't want to destroy the structure and durability of the car. Like I could do a K-member, I could do the crash bars, and um, they're actually weakening up the structure a lot. I've, I've asked around, my shop told me the same thing. It's not worth it for as much as I drive the car, and I want to keep this as like more relevant as possible. So like the average Mustang guy that wants to build a Mustang similar to mine, you can, and it's really feasible like it's doable that's why i don't want to like go into the point where this car is going to become a full-blown drag car and i don't know to me that doesn't seem fun i rather have in my mind i rather have five running and driving all motor cars they're not the fastest they're not the best they're not king of king shit whatever the case may be but um i can jump in all five of them and absolutely beat the living shit out and that's that's personally that's what i like to see um and it's more fun it's more entertaining in my opinion I, some people are chasing a number, like I said before, it'd be cool, I want to get this car in a certain number, um, and I'll be happy with it, and then eventually I will move on to the next car, so leading up to my massive question is, I want you guys to comment right now, because I've been looking at a few cars, I want to get another car for the channel, um, I really don't know the route to go, I really am feeling C6 Corvette, uh, Z06, it's going to have to be in like an early, uh, or a little later, 2000, maybe 708, um, I know everyone keeps saying get the, I think, I believe it's 08 or 09, correct me if I'm wrong, up becomes, because it comes with a Tremec uh, TR6060, but if I get that car, I'll be doing an all-motor build, and I believe the T56 can hold about 700 to 750 to the wheels, and I know the C6's heads, cam, like E85, they make about 650 to the wheels, so I kind of somewhat will be in the safe spot, um, as long as I don't money shift and absolutely grenade my trans or do something stupid, I should be okay, but I really don't want to spend too, too much money, but I still want to like keep the content coming and pumping every single week. So please drop a comment right now of what car you guys want to see. I did post on my Instagram and, um, if you haven't followed me yet, it's Italian sign 410. Go check it out. All right. We are under the hood of Apollo right now. So let's start off with the Mishimoto coolant tank. I seen these go online for, I think about $200 I paid. Um, and then my intake setup. So $200. For Mishimoto coolant tank, let's just say another 50 bucks to get that paint match, and let's just make it 300 with the paint matching of everything. Um, and I'm not even counting like this in itself. I'm gonna count that separately with the whole Cobra Jet. So coolant tank and powder coating mods, um, $300 even. Let's just call that 300 bucks flat. And for my whole Cobra Jet setup, doing everything, putting the fuel rails um, on the right way, installing the installing the Cobra Jet, installing the throttle body, installing the full intake. I want to say, well, after selling some parts, selling the stock parts, I want to say out of pocket, I came out of like 2,500 bucks. And these are all rough numbers. This is like off my prior knowledge and after buying and selling some stuff. So I'm not actually coming off like a full Cobra Jet setup. I believe it would probably cost like 4,000 plus. But after buying and selling stuff, I believe I came out of pocket $2,500 for the intake, throttle body and everything installed and then additional tuning, um, which is like another $600 I believe I paid. So let's just wrap it all up together and say 3,500 um, and then modifying my catch can and doing stuff like that. So 3,500 for everything in the engine bay and next we'll be getting onto the price of the headers. Wish me luck. Eh. So I was just trying to add this up in my head and I was like, oh, that's kind of already getting a lot and we haven't even got to the headers yet. So headers alone, I went, went, I went with Cook's Inch and 7th 8s with the high flow green cats. Cats are pretty much the most expensive thing. Cats were about 1500 Headers were about 1000 2500 bucks, and probably throw another 1000 for labor, time, plus O2s, that whole nine. So another $3,500 just for that install. Before I forget, I also do have lower motor mounts. We could just say another 200 bucks for them because as they were installing the headers, they were doing that at the same exact time because they were already there, so which kind of saved me on labor in case of going back and forth. But if you guys want to take a look, you guys can see 
Um, it is a lot lower than your average regular Mustang. I don't think anything else was necessary after you put the lower motor mounts, um, like changing hoses or anything else wise. I'm I believe everything fit relatively perfect. Um, like I said before, I didn't do the job. The shop that I had, I always let do all my cars, the Fox and Apollo. Um, they took care of that, did an awesome job. All right, so now we can talk about suspension and also add the mirror caps, 80 bucks for the mirror caps, or I put 60, 60 bucks. And over to the back, you won't be able to see um, so I did urethane bushings and vertical links on the car, which helps tremendously when it comes to putting down the power and launching. Um, you guys seen Apollo launch at West Virginia, the track that we went to go, or that we went to. Um, it was like little cash days, but this car hooks and books um, actually surprisingly well. So vertical links, urethane bushings. Vertical links, I want to say were like 120. I installed them myself, super easy. All you got to do, two bolts right on the side, top and bottom, drop it out and slide the new one right back in. Yo, what's up, Gleet? Move your fat ass out of the way, cuz. And then over to the back is the vertical links. You guys will see them there, the bushings that make the S550 pretty much tank slap. Yeah, let me climb under Apollo. You guys should be able to see them. They are red right up there, right there. That is the vertical bushings that I changed. You need to change them top and bottom. Dude, Guido, get your fat ass off me, dog. Dude, I love you, all right? He got, he's scared of the camera. It's okay, Gui, it's okay. It's okay, Paso. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So yeah, that's the vertical links. Um, vertical links and urethane bushings. Highly recommend, do it. 100% it's going to change the feel so that pretty much bushing like even on Colin's car I was going to show you guys I told him to come over and film today, but he's being a loser So that bushing um, it goes like this that bolt that holds it up in the bushing bushing keeps it like super firm and planted So when it goes to put the power down it lessens the wheel hop um, is like the best way I can explain it But night and day difference highly recommend that too. adding that to the price list all right, so bushings and vertical links, I added them together. I believe, I remember correctly, it was like 100 something for the vertical links, and then the bushings were like, I think 300 bucks, but time and labor, because you have to pretty much drop the whole like rear subframe to get them in and the correct way to do it. Um, we're just gonna cap it right at 1,000. I keep forgetting all the little things that I did add, and uh, rear diffuser light. This was an absolute pain in the ass to tuck the wires up and run them up through Oh god, I'm freaking locked already. Oh, 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 the key's in my pocket. That's weird. Why wouldn't it pop? Piece of junk. All right, there we go. You guys can see a blink down there, and it really was a pain because you had to run the wires to the side. I tried to, like, tuck them and make them look as factory as possible so no one can see, but from the naked eye, um, you really can't see. So I kind of rolled them up, stuck them up to the side. That was um, a good bit. I believe the light alone was, like, 150. Let's just cap that even, plus shipping and everything. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else on exterior. Oh yeah, freaking emblems, Jesus. So emblems, let's just say all the way around 50 bucks. Um, and then plus that, cap it at another 200. So previously I had the lights on there at 600. I just bumped it up to eight so I didn't have to make another tab. Just so y'all know, keep in track and go over to the interior of Apollo. Let's start with the Dyna stuff and some of the carbon that I did. So. Um, I appreciate Dyna sending me the first ever full uh, Forge Carbon Dash, but I have to be honest, I am not a very huge fan of the stick-on stuff. It looks great in my opinion. Um, it looks good, but it's just the little things. And you guys know my OCD is at level 10. Let me slide this bad boy back. Once I get in this seat, you ain't getting out for a hot minute. Ah, oh, God. All right, so we're in. And you guys can see over to the top. Um, when I install this, I always use everything right. Uh, heat gun, like everything to lay down properly. And it always keeps peeling up. So every time I got to get in the car, I'm constantly pushing down on it and just going over and over. But uh, Dyna does make some good stuff for the Mustangs. I'm not going to sit here and bash them um, because they really do. And they did send it to me for free. So I can't complain about that. It did come out good. I mean, everything did line up relatively decent. And um, it's the stuff like that. The stick on stuff is kind of like hard to make perfect but I am talking with a company or I think it's a company or a single guy right now he makes full interior of forged carbon like everything gets replaced so like all this will get replaced this black trim will get replaced um like every single thing 
uh, my whole dash, the center console, down here, the screen, like you name it in this car, he does the full forged carbon uh, replacement interior and he also does like regular carbon, he does stuff like that. So if I ever do work a deal with this guy to actually do the full interior kit, um, we're gonna do it and I'm gonna install it and show you guys and I think it's gonna look a lot better. It's gonna look more like presentable, I would say. And it's not gonna like, you're not gonna see all the edges, not where some of the stuff's popping up again like you can just see i'm just constantly pushing it down and it drives me absolutely insane but besides that this stuff that stuff was pretty much free i'm not even going to count that but over to the steering wheel this forged carbon steering wheel white stitching i went with the leather i'm um, not really a huge huge fan of the alcantara i have alcantara and the fox and i believe i i got my dad leather or i got him alcantara for the gtr i used to have it in my 16 gt and over time it just kind of like falls apart and i did all the treatment and stuff for it but you know i just wasn't a fan because i was daily driving the car so went with the leather actually super super impressed with it their steering wheels absolutely destroy the dashes like in comparison wise because the build quality on this is a1 like fitment on point every little button fit in perfect it was absolutely perfect so thousand bucks added to the list for the steering wheel itself and yet again i also forgot to add the freaking hood struts so as you guys saw we did the interior thousand dollars for the steering wheel hood struts ninety dollars just added and i was sitting down and i added every single thing up and um it we're at a solid if you guys want to see that right there 14 g's as of now for everything um and that's not even including the seat so if you want to add the seat with the modifications we had to do to get it to work you might as well just add another three that brings us to a solid 17k and uh yeah, we're pretty deep in the price. I just got done adding everything up and then I was like, you know what? Might as well just add the PPF, the roof wrap, tent window and everything. Um, we were at $17,150. The $150 was for the XY pile, so forgot that too. And I'm sure, I'm sure I am missing something else. Um, and I'm sure I probably installed it on the freaking channel and I am completely missing it. So let's just say we're at a solid 20 G's when it comes to building Apollo front to back and the way it sits. And, uh, yeah, it is a pretty, pretty, pretty fat penny, but you know, it's worth it. Um, this car runs and drives great. I have zero, absolutely zero complaints. I would love to daily drive this car, but I don't know. I feel like Apollo is the, like, the main icon on the channel, but I do want to get another car that is going to be like top tier right with it where they can also go head to head. I do want a Corvette. You guys saw that in the beginning. I did mention a C6 Corvette. I love, absolutely love the Le Mans blue. Um, and I do want the Z06 model. So um, it's gonna have the LS7. It's a 427 cubic inch Chevrolet motor with a Tremec. Um, the earlier year I get, or the newer year I get, will have a TR6060. Um, I believe it's 2009 and under, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll have a T56. But you guys know all these cars are all motor in here besides the GTR and that came twin turbo. So that's obviously staying twin turbo unless we put a coyote in it, which would make it a whole lot faster. It's like probably actually, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool though. But um, if I hit the lottery, I'll probably end up doing that just because you know, why not? If I have lottery money, it's really, yeah, screw it. Coyote swap it and be a lot faster. Um, you guys know I love all motor. Like I was saying in the beginning, all motor is just more simple. Um, we can road course Ricky um, whenever the events come back to Maryland, uh, road coursing Ricky, drag race Apollo, do half miles on Apollo. So I want something that will go head to head with Apollo. That also my dad can drive and um, I can race some of my buddies and it'd be stick shift because you know they always rag on me for getting the 10 speed. Uh, 10 speed is Kang though. They just gotta throw that out there and they know that that's why Derek bought a 10 speed because he felt the thunder, he felt it. He felt that second gear hit in Apollo and he's like, damn, that shit's right. So I want something, another all motor car, another all motor platform. Uh, let me know how y'all feel about the Chevrolet Corvette. I am a huge, huge C6 fan. I actually like the C6 is better than the C7s. Um, that's just my preference personally. I think that body style is like a timeless body style. It just, it looks good next to any car and I've seen them next to supercars and they still look amazing. And the prices are actually somewhat getting affordable. I could say um, the Z06 I'm looking at is under 40, which it has like 40,000 miles on it, which is not bad because you can get like a Gen 2 um, S550 for around the same price. Granted, it is a lot newer, has a lot more creature comforts, but you don't have a 427, you have a Coyote, which is Gen 2, is still great. Um, and I believe the Gen 2 Coyote probably will hold a lot more power than the 427. Um, I, I remember that someone telling me there is a, wink, a weak link to the 427. I know it has the four cylinder deactivation shit that completely destroyed my C8 also, 
But this C6 I found is a two owner car. Um, one lady had it, it's lady driven too, which is, you know, it's not molested. It's a completely bone stock, um, 40 some thousand miles on it and uh, it's clean. It's Le Mans blue and I kind of really want it because I kind of need something to daily drive and I'm not driving Apollo. Um, I just love that car too much and I love Ricky. I did drive Ricky today actually back and forth to work and stuff, but it, it was about $20 worth of gas just to get back and forth. So that's kind of, eh. I don't think it's gonna be any better with the C6, but they are super light. So I don't think the gas mileage will be that bad. I believe me in the car would be like 33 to 3,400 pounds. They're stupid light curb weight, which is absolutely insane. It is why it'll be very fast all motor. That's why I think y'all like it. And it'll be like my half mile car. Do half mile runs in it. We could do autocross in it. We could literally do anything in it. We can even try dig racing in it if y'all want to see it. Um, drop a comment. Let me know what y'all think. I'm going to stop talking y'all ear off. Hopefully you guys enjoy knowing about every little penny I spent on Apollo. And I think I am missing something, but besides the point, I'll catch you in next week's video. Um, stay tuned. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. Till the next one. Peace.